Warning, the show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. This show is produced by Geek Happy Network, constantly curious about the things we love. If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. This This is Smorgasbord! Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Hi here. Hi here. Um, I'm Mick, and here is my co-host. Angel. And we are the dynamic duo, neither here nor there. <laughs> and today we're joined by Phil. Hi, Phil. Hi here. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? What's your favorite food? What do you do? Um... Favorite food? Well, I'm a filmmaker. Favorite food? Let me think. Um, Phil, uh, by the way, Phil has legendary crafting. That's true. Any any set that Phil is at has like the best snacks. Yeah, with crafty being film set food. Try to snack it up because I like to eat. And he but shares he, that with there's everybody. There's a good variety of like healthy and not healthy snacks on on Phil's set. Snacks but, or sex? Um, that was gonna work. Snacks. Weird. Snacks, okay. snacks. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do have a lot of snack accidents on Phil's sex. <laughs> That's true. This is true. I'm kind of obsessed right now with um, spin dip. So I've been trying to hack a good spin dip. But Ooh. What is spin dip? Uh, spinach, spinach dip. dip. Yeah, just because. Oh. Get with the times, man. Sorry, I thought it's you like You have dip. to abbreviate things. <laughs> yeah. You can't just have the chips dry, right? So Right. I've Fair been enough. like adding cheese to it and, you know. Ooh. Uh, a good warm cheesy yeah, spin yeah. dip. A lot of these things we eat at crafty or even at parties, we're not going to be able to share it anymore. No, you know, because you're touching it and then you're dipping it, and then some people double dip. It's okay. I don't like sharing anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> you like stealing. I like to show up with my own Tupperware and just like hoard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Such a Filipino answer to have like. A dip <laughs> or a sauce as like your favorite food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sauce hey, is food. Yeah. Sauce yeah, is life for the Filipinos. Yeah, sauce. Everything is sauce. Yeah. Sauce. <laughs> Gotta have your sauce. Well, today we're gonna talk about something very similar, which is iso or grilled intestines of chicken or pork. A lot of this is a very common street food in the Philippines, which often comes with really good dips, which are called sausawans. Unlike a lot of the some of the strange meals that we've covered on this show, like ptarmigan poop or virgin boy eggs, which we just recently covered. Ptarmigan poop. A lot of these dishes are like very uncommon dishes to the country, usually like specialized to specific local areas or it's just like some religious ritual or whatnot. When it comes to iso, the grilled intestines of animals. This is actually a very popular street food dish in the Philippines that can be found almost everywhere in the country and consumed by almost every Filipino for pretty much any occasion, really. Phil, did you ever try iso? I haven't. Not off the street. I'm too scared. Like, they, we saw some things off the street, and I, I think my stomach is just too delicate. <laughs> uh, I did... No, actually, I did have, uh, when we were in Bicol, where we shot a movie, uh, kind of like in a little bit, about nine hours south from Manila. Right. We had the grilled bananas. and uh, <gasps> Ooh, yes. Amazing. Yeah. There Banana was cube. also some, um, when we were at uh, Caramoan, which is where they shoot Survivor. Right. Th- there was like grilled fish every day. So, mm. you know, with a fresh cut co- coconut, you can't go wrong, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, today we're going to cover... Obviously, Iso, but I'd wanted to begin the episode talking about the Filipino street food and just the different kinds of street food we have in the Philippines. And then we could talk a little bit about how to make Iso, and then we'll wrap it up for the day. So the history of Iso and Philippine street food roots all the way back to the colonial period of the Philippines under Spain, like almost everything about the Philippines. <laughs> um, under Spanish rule, Filipinos were considered second-class citizens, so meat wasn't really available to the Filipino people. Um, most of the meat obviously just went straight to for farmed by the Filipinos, but served to the Spaniards back then. So to stay alive or to have some kind of meat option, Filipinos would live off eating parts of the animals that the Spaniards wouldn't dare to eat, like the intestines, the lungs, the livers, or what we would call today awful meat. Awful. Um, 
Yeah. I learned that word from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what, what were we doing that had awful as well? Just I don't remember, yeah. but I just know I didn't know that word before. <laughs> so these organs became a key source of meat for Filipinos as they learned to treat and clean it for consumption because a lot of awful meat usually requires proper cleaning to consume, right? Because then you don't want to have waste or bacteria or even pathogens it's the poopies. Yeah. But as the Philippines gained independence and grew all economically, these dishes decreased in popularity, but street food remained. Now, instead of awful dishes being served in the streets, you'd find different kinds of meats now, like barbecued meats. So that how that's how we birthed barbecue in the Philippines, like the Filipino barbecues, which is so delicious. I now, wish to experience this in real life. Have you never mm. had Filipino barbecue yet? Not authentic enough, I don't mm. think. So... But you've yeah. eaten Filipino food in Vancouver, right? Yes, in Vancouver. I yeah. think we might have ordered sisig, which is... Yeah. 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 Technically How, like a street food. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. That is served But I also street. would like to experience it in the setting. Too. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. We have a pretty good recipe for a Filipino barbecue. It's one day we'll have you guys over and we'll have a Filipino barbecue with Filipino barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard filipino barbecue with filipinos the dish itself is called barbecue so it's like <laughs> yeah. street food is kind of very wide i wouldn't say it's as wide as taiwan i think as a really intense street food game as well but I usually can i can kinda... i can attest to that one i've gotten many different kinds of cholera <laughs> 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 maybe not cholera but... right something similar yeah. <laughs> The but shoot yeah. poops. Yep. The, the, the poops. The street food poops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The shooters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the molten shooters. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, in my opinion, when it comes to street food in the Philippines, you could kind of divide it into two different kinds of street food. There's the cart-based street food, which is just people carrying their street food with them and walking down the streets. And there's uh, kind of restaurant-like street foods where they're just little houses or sheds or huts or whatever that serve full meals and full dishes. Um, today we'll focus more on like the street food of vendors with carts or random things that they carry around that you could pick up because that's I think you really have such a really a cool diversity of different kinds of street foods. So the resurgence of awful dishes though when it comes to street food came in the 70s when the Philippines had another economic crisis. Likely because people couldn't buy meat anymore or meat became expensive, then a lot of these awful meats became something that people could cook again. Now, while most of the Philippines do still live in poverty, the popularity of these awful meats continued to exist and become popular amongst all Filipinos, as you could find it all around today. It's kind of crazy when you go in the Philippines, like obviously it's not a developed country, so there's a lot of poverty in the Philippines. So even anywhere you go, if you're not in a gated village, you'd find a lot of people in the streets and there's a lot of food culture there. If you don't have a strong stomach, it's usually suggested for you not to eat a lot of these foods because there's not a lot of sanitation or health guidelines when it comes to making this food. But if you could stomach it, I don't know, some of these guys are really good at the food they make. I feel like if you live there, you're probably more immune to some of the bacteria that might yeah. be found. Yeah, you for sure. You wouldn't react as violently. <laughs> 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 oh for sure yeah i mean even as a kid when i grew up like my mom always told me not to eat the street foods but like i was a big fan of the fish balls and the sauces mm. that come mm. with it so i just kept buying it it's like okay five... fish balls are great though so yeah. mom sorry yeah <laughs> exactly what about so the you... bullet did you try bullet i do not like bullet <laughs> yeah I, i'm not a fan either. Not a fan. it's too salty for me it's very salty it's like the the egg embryo like half Duck egg. Half grown, yeah. Does it have bones? <laughs> it sometimes Does it have bones. a beak? No. Sometimes bones or beak, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Actually, my, yeah. My friend bit one and he he picked a feather out of his teeth. Oh. <laughs> it's not like that's not a good bullet. Like a good Third, bullet yeah. wouldn't have any of those things. So they yeah they plucked it too too ripe. <laughs> too ripe. Yeah, it's too ripe. Too ripe. Overripe, too overripe bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Because, Phil, you've been to, like, I know you're of Filipino descent, but you've been to the Philippines too, right? Yeah, just a couple times in my, you know, later adulthood, I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, I just never had any interest to go. But, you know, especially the last trip where I actually shot a movie and it was, we, we really went out to the country as, as opposed to staying in Manila, which is not so. Um, you can really, you know, you feel it's a lot simpler. So mm. 
you know, you can go to the wet markets, which are like probably a little scary for people from North America to see. Right. Because, you know, it's just like food and flies. <laughs> flies <Yeah. around> it, <laughs> and, like blood everywhere. But, you know, then there's also a lot of the little stalls or, you know, we'd always get like a orange crush uh, equivalent, yes. uh, you know, at the, the little, I forgot the name of it, but it was uh, market stores, I guess yeah. you call it, little corner stores that are like basically a hut. Yeah. You know, and it's it's beside, it's on the middle, middle of a road, you know, beside a, a train track, you know, yeah. it's just this little hut <laughs> and the, you'd have, aw, have that with... Cute. Yeah, you'd have that with some barbecue or sea yeah. sig or whatever, right? Did they serve the royal or orange crush in a plastic bag? Um, I was too scared, but they did. <laughs> yeah, in a the, bag? The plas- plastic yeah. bag. Um, How did, with like a straw? Yeah. Yeah, it's like... Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, like, do you just like... Yeah, you just poke it. Funnel. I was a little <laughs> like, too scared. Oh, it's like a Capri Sun. Yeah, yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of, but more ghetto, like yeah. uh, clear, clear plastic yeah. flag sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like definitely local. Yeah, I think the reason for that is because the bottles itself can be recycled, so you get a deposit back mm-hmm. from it. So a lot of these vendors would just pour the bottle into yeah. a bag, so you could have it, and they could keep the bottle, so they could return it. Oh, to get the, okay. Mm, smart. But and yeah. you get the fun of poking a straw into a bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you appreciate street food, there's definitely. You know, you can get Turon and mm-hmm. uh, any kind of, you know, every kind of fruit is fried. Yep. yep. Is fried oh. in some sort. So that's a big part of what it is in it comes when it comes to the Philippines. Is food is really life for us, even though it's a very impoverished country. A lot of, even if you go to the main city, you'll see there's so many different varieties of restaurants. I've heard stories about chefs from around the world would come to the Philippines and try to open up a restaurant there just to test different flavors out because Filipinos just eat and they're so (laughs) driven by like fads and everything. So a restaurant would open and close within months. Like every time I visit, there's like a new restaurant that's popular. I wouldn't say it's the same thing for the street food culture, but it definitely is a testament of what kind of how obsessed we are with eating. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely almost a collector mentality, you know, like yeah. <laughs> my uncle always say select and collect, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, in the mall, there'd be, you know, everything from big chains to their own version of a big chain, for example, like a fat burger or a, you know. For sure. And that's a that's a fantastic thing about uh, Filipino food, really, is it's so... You could just, it's anything, really. <laughs> I mean, you could say that almost about Filipino culture, too. It's just because it's so many different cultures mixed into one. It's hard to tell what would define Filipino food or Filipino people. So you could just kind of plug them in anywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think a defining trait is flavor and actually yeah. having flavor. Yes. Whereas, like, North American cooking, I would say it would be... The lack of flavor is their signature. <laughs> <laughs> more subtle. More subtle. Yeah, more like subtle the, for sure. The palate is more subtle. <laughs> like if you think about Filipino food, think about something that's either super sweet, super savory. Or, or both. S- or both. Or both. Or, or super, super sour. Personally, like my theory is that, that, you know, the place is so damn hot, you know, you, you can't taste anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> just so, your own sweat. So they just, they just crank <laughs> crank it you know like yeah for sure like that's the one thing you really have to keep in mind with street food it's really food you eat with your beer which is usually a san miguel or a red horse beer Um, Mm -hmm. i think the term inuman is a really big part of the philippines which is really just to drink it's very different here i found that inuman drinking for the filipino people it's you know it's a mixture it could be you go out to a bar get drunk but it could also just be you just have unlimited booze in your hand as you talk and chill with your friends and listen to music and that's something that i found was so much missing here in north america Mm. that i miss those days of just inuman where you don't really care what's going to happen today you're just going to talk and chill forever (laughs) like my cousin and i did it when i visited we just went to a different bar every time and we just got a drink and it was it wasn't even the drinking that was the big part of it it was just we we're just hanging yeah, we're just <laughs> sitting just around just chilling yeah and for like, the most part it's almost like we try to get drunk so we get hungry enough to keep eating <laughs> yeah that's true i mean that's why i think there's also such a fascinating variety of food when it comes to street food like we'll just cover a few things here it's a mixture of different things from sweet dishes to savory dishes when it comes to sweet dishes there's dirty ice cream which is just really just ice cream Um, apparently it was inspired from japan um where japan had like ice cream in the streets how dirty is it 
it's just i think we i mean i grew up think i thought it was just called dirty ice cream because it's just ice cream off the streets like it's not <laughs> pure clean you literally ice cream, pick you know? it up <laughs> on the side yeah off. here's some dirt <laughs> yeah like someone some makes it there <laughs> um halo halo is another one that you could find in the streets not it's not really common but it is there um i like halo halo which is just a mixture Except of for different the beans. things yeah mm-hmm. like halo halo just means to mix to mix yeah so all halo mix. halo is just a smorgasbord of different yeah. things mix and, mix Shaved ice and milk is the key ingredient there, and sugar yeah. actually. It's actually basically growing. like take, take all the Taiwanese desserts and throw them in. Yeah, the exactly. Pot. One bowl. <laughs> yeah. I remember as a kid, my favorite halo halo was the one where I didn't put anything. <laughs> it <was> just <laughs> evaporated that's just, milk. That's just, that's just one ice hollow. That's just bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one hollow. You don't get two hollows. For yeah. That one. <laughs> um, the hall is another one, which is essentially tofu with a sweet brown sugar sauce with some sago as well so it's yeah taho taho yeah which is more i guess like bubble tea minus the tea <laughs> yeah it is it's really good i i, I bring it to parties every year yeah, uh, for it's christmas so but so good yeah it's like sweet slightly sweet tofu and you heat it up and it's pretty money yeah Yum. Um, yeah, another yeah. one which i think phil you this is the prawn you probably ate which is banana or kamotaku which is mm-hmm, mm-hmm grilled banana, banana that has um sugars caramelized with the uh, yeah. fruits oh, i think i had like man like three of those in one sitting yeah <laughs> so it's that good yeah Turon is the other one that phil mentioned this is um a fried dish where you have a banana and usually jackfruit in it as well and then mm-hmm. wrapped in a kind of wonton wrapper like thing and then yeah. fried and then coated with caramelized or er, sugar as well when it comes to animal dishes, we talked about balut, which is a duck embryo, which I think is a dish for another episode. <laughs> Pinoy. I, I saw a picture of it once, and I'm like, nope. Yeah, it's not for everyone. Pass on this one. Definitely not for everybody. Pinoy's is just hard-boiled duck egg, so I guess the regular version of balut. <laughs> mm. um, there's also quick quick, which is fried quail eggs, which got its name from the sound quails it make, which is quack 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 quack. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not a quack it's a quick there's also tokneneng which is um the chicken version of quack quack which is fried chicken eggs and then my favorite which is fish squid or chicken balls or kikiam which is cuttlefish or pollock okay and i like things like, in ball form yeah i find that when things are like punched into ball form it's you got your your carb and your your fishy taste yeah yeah, yeah i remember this is my carb. favorite cart because some guys would walk with a cart with just a propane tank that heats up the big walk of fried or of oil and they just fry it in front of you then they usually have three oh different... i love those carts they're yeah, so entertaining right? <laughs> and they usually have like three different sauces there that you pick and then you mix it and i have no idea what's in these sauces like this is probably how you get sick is from those sauces because there's so much <gasps> dipping cross contamination <laughs> triple multi-dipping happening there mm. but usually there's like a sweet sauce there's a slightly spicy sauce and there's a kind of soy based sauce mm-hmm. they're very syrupy and yeah, and to finish off the rest of the um, street foods, there's also like we mentioned the awful dishes, and I love the names that they have for awful dishes in the Philippines. Just like quick, quick, they have quick, quick, just random names for it. For example, grilled congealed pig's blood is called Betamax because the blood what <laughs> Betamax yeah because the blood looks like little Betamax cassettes. Oh, cute. Certain... <laughs> um, grilled skewered chicken heads are called. Helmets. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh. Grilled pig's ears are called Walkman because <laughs> the ears look like the Walkman headsets. I like to name things after electronics. Yeah. And then Classic ones. Grilled chicken feet, which is called Adidas. I can't remember why it's called Adidas, but it is definitely named after the shoe Adidas brand. put Adidas on your feet. <laughs> yeah, probably that, honestly. And then the three stripes with the three chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, That's and then, cute. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> And then we have ESO, which is what we're going to talk mostly about, which is the grilled chicken and pork intestines. Now, it's called ESO because it comes under the word sausawan, and sausawan is dips, essentially, the dip. Um, so I think next to rice, sausawan is probably the second most common thing you'll find in any table in the Philippines for a dish, because we eat yeah. essentially any kind of meal with rice and a sausawan. So ESO falls under that group of food in the Philippines which we call iniho or grilled foods. Iniho foods can literally be any meat basted with sauce or and then grilled. 
So even Betamax, Helmet, Walkman, Adidas, they all fall under that category where you baste all of these things with some kind of sauce and then grill it and then usually dip it in another kind of sauce. So we have Inihau Nababwe, which is grilled pork belly, and you usually dip that in some kind of soy sauce, garlic, and vinegar mixture. Inihau Nabangus, which is milk fish, also is the same, etc., etc. And then, you know, Isau is just grilled pork and chicken intestines. So yeah, when it comes to Sausawans in the Philippines, it's so varied. Like, it's literally anything you dip with your food. It could be ketchup, it could be suka or vinegar that's usually mixed with chilies, garlic, or onion. But this is fish sauce. And then you have some kind of chili sauce. Uh, like I said, with the fishbowl or kikiam vendors, it's a mixture of like different sweet sauces. That It's usually the sauces that make the meal more than the meat itself or the dish itself. So for me, iso, I actually owned the first time I tried iso was in my mid-20s when we went to Boracay for a, a wedding. And there was this, this little bar there that we were so drunk. I think we tried this like this in Boracay. There's this bar that serves this 15 shot challenge. I was just seeing E at that point, but then my friends still thought I was single. So they're like, you got to do it because you're young and whatever. I'm like, God, I'm the same age. You're young and you have a liver. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the same age. So yeah, we did that 15 shot and we just walked around Baraka. Now, did you guys split the 15 shots oh. or did you take 15 shots I took yourself? 15 shots by myself with another friend. So oh, two of us shit. both took 15 yeah. shots. We got a t-shirt for it. <laughs> you still have that shirt. I do. I use it for sleeping. <laughs> uh, yeah you have to keep that was <laughs> it was so gross it was like a variety of it wasn't like 15 of the same shots it's 15 different kinds of shots from like milk based liquor to tequila to vodka to absinthe and stuff like that it's all different kinds it's gnarly my friend did the strategy of just taking all 10 without thinking about it throwing up and then oh taking God. the rest of the five that sounds awful <laughs> By the eighth shot, I was done. I was like, screw this. But anyway, we ended up finishing all 15 and then went out to drink more beer and had Isao at the end of the night. And my God, was that so good. <laughs> <laughs> or that now, wait, when you say chicken intestines, chickens are kind of small. So their intestines are like one noodles. Yeah, super tiny. Okay. So you'll see it. It kind of looks like brain actually when it's put in the skewer because it's kind of like zigzagged into a skewer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was like, I thought it would be like ramen noodles. No, <laughs> it would kind of look like it. But imagine if you put like thick udon noodles into a skewer and try to. Right. Mm. I think that's kind of coming over now into Vancouver. Not not through um, Filipino cuisine, more through like um, mainland China cuisine right. is the there's, you know, of course, the night markets here, mm -hmm. but where you can, you know, order any kind of like meat or intestine or whatever yeah. on a stick. But n now they have restaurants where they do that, where you just, Ooh. our our buddy Wai Sun Chang, he took us to, in Richmond, uh, I don't know the English name, I forgot. But in any case, it's, it's uh, yeah, he's like, do you want to try this? And it's like intestine, do you want to try this? And mm. it's just barbecued on a stick and they just have grills going the whole time. And you, you come out, come out of it smelling like smoke. Yum. You know? Yum. And they have, you know, you can have some with curry on it and some with, you know, cumin and like every strong again strong flavors mm -hmm. um cumin is like becoming yeah. one of my favorites yeah it's but so it's good. also one that you sweat out the next day yeah it smells yeah, awful smell <laughs> cumin, right? yeah guys i miss the night market we need to go if it's going to be a thing this year which it probably isn't going to be yeah i, mean, I don't know how they're going <laughs> to do 50 that 50 people <laughs> 50 people in the stall. <laughs> no way, yeah. We're never, you have to line up Socially the week distance. before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, how are those things going to work? Because, I mean, even the Philippines, uh, street food vendors, like, okay. DoorDash, go night market Yeah, food. Go, you know, the, some of the vendors we saw were literally right beside the, the train tracks, you know, built on the train tracks. Like, and they would pull, they would pull their food away from the train tracks, so... Yeah. How are you going to do that kind of vending? I don't know. I mean, at this point, the Philippines is still in full lockdown, right? So they, they haven't, I don't think they've even gone as far as figuring out what to do next. They're still trying to contain it. What's cool, what's crazy about the Philippines is there's also, they've also banned liquor. So there's a liquor ban in the Philippines now, too. Oh, no. Because like we mentioned, Inuman is a big ass part of the culture in the Philippines. And to do Inuman, you have to be with people. Yeah. So they just banned liquor. Uh, you know, and which is smart. Perha but perhaps it's a smart move. Too. Um, it sucks for the people there because it's oh, yeah. like it's like cutting off their lifeline. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like some of my so uncles are like, "I'm down to my last San Miguel." I'm like, I'm yeah. so sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's that's what they do. They just hang. Yeah. It's a lot of hanging. 
But if you ever want to do make your own e-cell at home, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the hardest part, similar to the last episode, the hardest part of making e is coming to the preparation and the cleaning of it. So you really want to make sure that when you get your intestines, you don't really won't trust your butcher. Like for sure they'll clean it for you, but you want to do your own due diligence as well as in cleaning the intestines. Just run it through some water. Make sure that there are no random wastes attached or inside the intestines before you serve it. Um, and then after that, you want to skewer your intestines first before cooking it, because then that way it stays firm and intact. And then you could boil the intestines as well to make sure that you could make it a little bit more tender before you start grilling it. Usually you want to boil it with salt, peppercorns, and dried bay leaves, and then simmer it in vinegar after. That helps tenderize mm. the intestines, but it also lessens the awful flavor and smell. Um, and then after that, you could grill the skewers while basting it in some kind of sauce. Um, the most common sauce that you use usually is soy sauce and ketchup. That is actually a very heavenly mixture. It's the, so good. From Especially my... was it the Mag Maggie soy sauce? Is that what yes, Maggie sauce. So With good. banana ketchup. I used to have a friend that had a bottle of Maggie sauce in his locker at yeah. the warehouse. Mm, <laughs> at lunchtime, nice. he would pull it out. Yeah, my son yeah. brings it to school. Yeah, <laughs> he has, and he has those, you know, the sea what's up. seafood yeah. flakes on top. You know? Nice. You need to get him a fanny pack, like a spice pack. A spice pack? A spice pack? A spice oh. fanny pack. That's God Planta has a spice one. He has like... Oh, yeah, that's right. He brings it to every set. That was one thing doing... You know, craft services on sets is I, I realized the importance of sauces, like even yeah. just hot sauce, right? People really appreciate it if you bring hot sauce. Cause... Yeah. Speaking of soy sauce and ketchup, my favorite fried chicken um, sauce is Maggie with ketchup and um, curry powder. Mm. Mm, that sounds great. Combine those three. Really good sauce for fried chicken. Hi there. My name is Kanyeki Kamawe, and I'm the host of the Represented Podcast. No matter who you are and no matter where you come from, we each have a story to tell. The Represented Podcast explores individuals' life stories with the hope that we can identify with or learn from them. Subscribe and listen to the show on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or even Spotify. You can also check us out on the Geek Happy Network website. That's geekhappynetwork.com. Finally, follow the show on Instagram at Represented Podcast to keep up with the fun stuff. Love to see you there. Peace. And like we do with every episode, we ask the two favorite questions. Well, I don't know if it's favorite, but it's questions nonetheless. It's a question. <laughs> <laughs> is it healthy or is it good? Definitely not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the ones that give you food poisoning. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, compared to other awful dishes or even other strange dishes we've had, you don't really get a lot of um, no, I guess that's more of a stomach thing in the Philippines. Everyone has stuffed stomachs. And you're also drinking a lot of booze. Definitely can get sick from it, but almost always not, just to be smart about it. And also not healthy, because you're usually probably drunk at this point when you eat it. <laughs> but whether it's good or not, it's so it's really good. Um, I've never had awful... I hate awful food, actually. Like, pate, I cannot stand pate. Anything with liver, intestines, I can't stand. But when I had Isa for the first time, it didn't even taste like intestines it was just good it was just good yeah. like i think the marinade yeah. was really i'm not a helpful. fan of pate either yeah mm, very rich yeah and i think the reason why this dish doesn't taste like awful is because i don't think filipinas like the taste of intestines and like we said the history of how this dish came to be was just finding a way to eat it so they probably just found a way by just making it taste good and just getting rid of the awful flavor and replacing it with sausawan and now i'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's our episode on ESO. Phil, do you have any favorite Filipino food? Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm kind of fiending on... Um, uh, I always have to get sisig. Strangely enough, which which I think you've tried, Angel. I think you've tried sisig. It's I don't like, remember the name. It's, it's, it's on the grill awful. plate. You know, like on the grill plate. Oh, yeah. Yes. And we mix it with a little egg. And yeah. Okay. It's like pork like cheeks. Pork cheeks or... Pig face. Different, yeah. I yeah. like that one a lot. Yeah. It's, it's very crispy. Yeah. Everyone has their own kind of spin I love it. crispy things, so... Oh. Yeah, uh, like such a useful dish for something people don't normally eat. I'm kind of getting into dinaguan, which is like, ooh. you know, the black. It's like it looks like a black, you know, thick soupy rice sauce. Yeah, did we? I think we had that one yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and it's okay. very salty. Yeah, I like um, that one too. <laughs> that was, and you put it on rice, and I was like, wow, you know, when I f was, you know, uh, older kid, and I found out what it was, I was like, uh, I don't eat yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> but, but now coming back to Filipino food, that yeah, I really dig it. And then 
Always got to have some lumpia. Can't, yeah. Can't go wrong with lumpia. The translation of dinogoan to English for people who don't know is to be bled on. That might give you a hint on what dinogoan has. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, nothing to waste, even yeah. from the, you know. Yeah, I agree. I Actually, that's one of the dishes, too, that I came to love as I grew older, was dinogoan. I avoided it as a kid knowing what it was and then tried yeah, it. Yeah, your palate changes when you get mm-hmm. older. So. Yeah, that's our episode on Awful. I'm excited for the title of this um, episode. I can't wait to write it down. Punful. It gives you punful. <laughs> Fantastic. Puntapun. It's puntiful. Yep. Puntapun. Plantiful. Plantiful. It's awful. <laughs> it's awfully awful. It's an <laughs> awful good. pun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 This is Smorgasbord. Have a ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network or email us at team at geekhappynetwork.com. We'd love to hear from our fellow Smorgies. This show is created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico.